Okay, welcome everybody. I'm so glad to see all of you here. Uh, and that's a good pleasure. Um, I'm really glad we got the time to get an introduction and also uh, for all of you to meet uh, some of our team members for the session or my talk here about building effective teams. I think we can all recognize that in startups or even as a entrepreneur, you don't go it alone. Uh, a team is a core part of your uh, business. So this is a picture of my desk uh, at Armand University. Uh, I usually at least have minimum three screens on. I work as an analyst there. So uh, I would probably work around 40, 50 hours a week. But at some point, I made a choice uh, and wanted to become an entrepreneur. Uh, at, this, sorry, <laughs> uh, at the time, uh, I still needed an income. And I still needed a job. So what I started doing was I started moonlighting. Meaning that this is the screen I would see seven days a week. So 40, 50 hours a week I'd be at my job. Then afterwards, I'd go by 10 o'clock, I'd be working on my startup. Saturdays, I'd be working on my startup. Sundays, I'd try to go, but if I could help myself, I'd call into the office. I think my manager thought I was a hard working employee who was like swiping into the building. <laughs> Every Saturday after work, I'd be swiping out at 9 10 p.m. They thought I was a hard working employee. Uh, little did they know that a lot of the work was around setting up my business. So, uh, much of the things that I was doing was around building my business plan. Uh, and I was focusing heavily on that. I think at the same time, I was building or building a website uh, for one of my first businesses. Uh, I was trying to identify the opportunity, um, manage the resources, the limited resources I had at the time to go on to start the startup. Uh, and I was trying to balance the uncertainty of the risk, inherent risk of having a startup, and the competitive of the market landscape. And acting as the founder, I was the fulcrum and all that, trying to balance that and pull that together. One Saturday, I was getting up to go to my office. I, as normal, I got on my bike, I got to the office, I got in, and I thought, this is the day that I register my company. So I went online to the online portal. I put in all my ID, all my information, thought of a company name, uh, got it registered, and paid my few hundred bucks. Uh, I continued working on my business plan, and as I was working about uh, two or three uh, hours later, I get an email and my company registration comes. And I'm absolutely excited. I'm so excited about my company registration. It's official. So I go to the printer, I print it off, I go to the laminator, and I laminate it, and I'm like, I'm gonna put it up on my wall. And for me personally, uh, it meant more than the two years I spent on my master's and the 12 years that I've spent on my career. This piece of paper to signify that my entrepreneurial journey was beginning meant more than me than the effort I've put in decades around my career uh, and the studying that I've done. And as I looked around near the corner of our building, uh, my office is just upstairs. So as I was walking around the building, super excited, I realized that uh, I was my own. So I realized that I was sitting by myself and there was nobody to share the joy. I was thinking about my college and oh, it's a Saturday. Everybody's at home. They're with their families, they're out. I thought of my friends. They're out playing football, they're in the park, they're in the beach. And at that moment, I think I told myself that entrepreneurship is a solo journey. So for a year at this, I've been working on coding, I've been working on my business plan, and my Saturday, my Sunday, my afterward was on this. Right? And I knew that I couldn't join my friends. I couldn't join my colleagues. A lot of colleagues after work, especially on Friday, they'd be like, hey, let's go out. Let's go have dinner, you know, it's in the week. I thought, don't worry, I won't join. And once in a while, I was like, well, mostly I won't. So at that point, I told myself it's a solo journey. I also thought about where my journey was leading, and I knew my journey would lead from Australia to Thailand. So, and I knew that my friends and my colleagues also did not follow. So this entrepreneurial journey for me was a solo journey. 
So I went back and I started working on my business plan, identified the opportunities, identified the resources and so forth. And as I was going about this, I realized that one of the things that I was missing and not focusing on was the team. So as much as that founder is a fulcrum that balances the uncertainty and the risk with the opportunities in the market landscape, what really carries the connection between the relationship between the resources and the opportunity is really the team. And what's fundamental is the relationship with my team. So I asked for help. This is Duplé, he's uh, one of my best friends, he's also my cousin, he's also a brother. And I said, hey, hey, I need some help. And I showed him my business plan. I said, this is my business plan, and I've started building a website. So he said, yeah, sure, I'll help you. So he started jumping on board. This is actually in the background of my office. So that's our meeting room, this is the Indian University office. Every Saturday, he and I would come in, and we would start building. So this lasted for more than a year and a half. Every Saturday, he would come in. And then, of course, we also had his workshop. But every Saturday, he would drink. And I thought, this guy is giving up so much right, to be part of my dream, right? What motivates him? And when we have a team, and when we have employees, there are many reasons for motivation. Of course, there's a salary and wage, there's promotions, there's performance review, there's achievement, alignment value, there's purpose and meaning in your work, there's a sense of ownership, relationship, job security, opportunity for advancement, learning and growth. But there are many reasons that people and employees and staff turn up to work. Right? And as a founder and as a manager, <coughs> it's my role and responsibility to identify those motivations and bring them to the surface to build effectively. And what it really comes down to is three categories of motivation. What I'm concentrating more here is intrinsic motivation. The reason for that is I truly believe it's long lasting, it's sustainable. Not only that, it's personal. And so all the motivations that we see, we distill into three areas. Purpose, mastery, and autonomy. Purpose means what I am doing at my job. What my team is doing at that job is connected to large ones larger than themselves. It gets them connected. Mastery means they're becoming, they're excelling in their skill. They're then the master of their domain. That they can specialize in what they need to learn. And that is an intrinsic motivator. That I want to be the best, I want to master this. And of course, we all know micromanagers, we've all had something to over our shoulders. You know that when something is yours and you have ownership, you have pride. So out of all this, building the second piece is about identifying drive. The meeting point between purpose and mastery. And how do we uncover that in our team? So I'll go back to the Bible. I chose him because he worked from in Australia and so he's the only person here that I can't embarrass. But when I was speaking to him, his really thing, his motivation was purpose and he was about connecting. So he and I both grew up outside of Nagaland. Uh, uh, we spent more than 30 years, more than his entire life. And his thing was that he wanted to connect to his community. He wanted to connect to his family, right? With myself, Joy, uh, always that we work with as well. And that's what we raised him. Of course, there's already mastery. He has a lot of skills that he get started. Uh, we have uh, SME that works with as well in the technical field. But his main thing was he wanted to make sure. And that was motivation. And for the past four years, that's what brings him back every day. Because no way we can say is the sailing self. So when new team members join the team, right? What we ask them. And what our job is to align their motivation and purpose with our company. So all the team members that we met here today uh, go through this process as part of the way. Reflection as a tool. So how does the company value us? 
show up in your work and your life? How does it make sense? What is your primary career focus for the next one year and the next three, five years? What experience or skill do you need to develop and achieve your career focus? And most importantly, this is my job. What support do you need from your management? What can the company provide for you to achieve your goals? For what drives and motivates you to come back, not just come in every day, but to show up every day? So, as I'm building out, we'll go back to, uh, I'm building out a business plan, and I ask what I'm going to achieve in five years, right? What does that mean for the next four months? What do I need to achieve in the next three weeks? What's my workload for the next two days? And in the next one hour, what am I doing? How is that negative, right? But really, for our team, what are they doing in the next one hour? Right? How is it connected to what will be achieved in the next couple of days? How does that contribute to our three weeks? A quarter or more? And how does that one hour task connect to our long term goals? So, I often tell our team that find the red line. So the red line is what are you doing today and how does that link to our long term, short term, and long term goals? And how does that link to your career path for the next one, two years, three, five years? What are you doing now? And I'm quite frank, and I'm saying if we can't find the red line, it's not a priority. Right? Find the red line, if it's not a red line, if you can't identify that, articulate that, it's not a priority. So, how does this manifest? It manifests one of the tools that we got for the uh, planning process. We review the previous quarter. Uh, we have a planning team where we all come together and we have to share the process of the quarter. And we review our long term, short term goals. How does that lead to the priority for the department? Within each department, there's three, and there's an individual leading those three. And from those three, what is the individual goal that is setting itself? My job here is to review and make sure there is alignment in all of that. That the red light is just on paper. So when we have the department plan for the next quarter, it aligns to the long term and short term goals of the organization. It aligns to the stream so we achieve the next quarter. And how does that mean for an individual person, a team member sitting there and their work plan? So these are the tools that we're utilizing to build effective team to high performance team. What we do is we utilize these tools to identify a common purpose and a shared purpose, whether it's their individuals, linking to the purpose of the company. We have clear roles. So within those documents, right, it's very clear what you are doing in the next quarter, what your work plan is, down to what is your next hour now? Except the leadership. These are the processes that we build to hold and support really effective team. It builds solid relationships because of the accountability and there's transparency. Although I may not be working what you're working on, you may not work on what you're working on, we all collectively know where we're getting from you to do that way. If we need those resources, that also identifies the individual goal of our quality plan. We need to effective and efficient communication. And so these are the tools that we utilize to build effective communication. And all the tests them afterwards. Um, but I think when we look at our team members and look at the people that we work with, uh, I remind myself that these are all individuals, they come with their hopes, they come with their plans, they come with their motivation, and it's my job as a founder and manager to align those, make sure that we're hitting our company goals, 
but make sure that when people come and they leave, they're better off and they're closer to achieving their goals and their purpose. That's all for today. Uh, thank you and we'll take questions.